Midjourney is complicated and it's ever changing. It is a limitless tool for creating any imagery that you want, but even on the latest version, a lot of the time you'll get something that's just unimaginative and downright boring. Five months ago, I made my most popular video on this channel. It was called Everything You Need to Know About Midjourney in 15 Minutes or Less. I taught you about parameters and image prompts and weights and styles and so much more, and together we tried to understand how to make beautiful art. But as is the nature with the AI industry, within a week there were several things about that video that were already outdated. So. To celebrate the new year, I want to get you up to date, and at the same time, I want to turn you into an art generating master. To help you follow along, I have a few introductions I want to make. This is Roger. Everyone say, hi Roger! Roger wants you to subscribe. He's a panda, and he loves his safari hat. You should also meet Hannah. She's an elf and a princess, and you may have noticed she also has purple hair. Lastly, this is a mountain. It's tall, made of rock, and has ice on top, and uh, we'll call it Icy Peaks. Icy Peaks. We're going to learn the intricacies of Midjourney while generating these concepts and trying to make them as good as we can. Let's get started. The biggest difference I wanna talk about is how there are now seven models being supported by the Midjourney bot. You heard me, seven. Let's type slash settings and look at these. Versions one, two, three, four, Midjourney test, Midjourney test photo, and Niji mode. Let's write a simple prompt for Roger and generate him in every version. By the way, for the rest of this video, I'll be setting the seed to one for all my generations. That way, when I make changes, you can see exactly what those changes actually do. The numbered versions work basically how you'd expect. The higher the number, the better the model is across just about every dimension. AI art has been improving a ton, and version 4 is just newer, so it's going to be just better overall. Midjourney Test is a model that I think is a bit of a mix between Midjourney version 3 and Stable Diffusion. It came out in parallel with Stable Diffusion's open source release, and it does a good job combining Stable Diffusion's knowledge with Midjourney's creativity. Midjourney test photo is similar, but it just seems to have been fine-tuned to make photos specifically. The trade-off is that these test models are not nearly as intelligent as more classical Midjourney models and has trouble closely following the prompt. Notice that Roger here isn't even wearing a hat. You'll also notice these test models generate two images rather than four for squares, and if you make something that's not a square, it only generates one. But lastly, we have Niji, and Niji is a new mid-journey fine-tune for anime and illustrative styles, and oh my god, Roger looks great. On to version 4, and it is the most popular model by far. It is filling up that community feed, and for good reason. First off, Midjourney recently made it the default, even though it's still in alpha, but it is incredibly versatile. The images look great, and it takes simple prompts and turns them into beautiful pieces. Let's stick to version 4 and generate Hannah while we talk about the rest of the settings in this new UI. By the way, these settings are a friendly way to access the slash prefer suffix command, and lets you automatically add parameters, which we talked about in the last video, to the end of all your prompts. The first setting option we'll look at is quality. The default value for quality would be dash dash Q1, and it sets the GPU time for this generation to be about one minute. If you lower the quality to half, the generation takes half the time, but also the details aren't as precise, and Hannah looks kind of janky. If you set it to high quality, it takes twice the time, but the details are generally going to be enhanced across the board. For this image, Hannah just looks better, her background is more filled out, and it might even be more clickable if I use her for a thumbnail. Okay, on to Midjourney's stylize function. This wasn't here last time I talked about Midjourney in depth, so here's an overview. Generally speaking, low numbers will let your prompt speak for itself, and Midjourney will not adjust the image based on its learned sense of beauty. But higher numbers will do things like add makeup, studio lighting, or whatever it thinks will improve the image overall. Expect this to change, and maybe even soon, but at the moment, the settings UI for style only really works for version 3. So let's show you how style works on all the models one by one. Well, Versions 1 and 2 don't even use it, you'll get an error if you try. 
Version 3 uses stylized numbers from 0 to 60,000. Let's quickly look at how these affect Hannah. Version 4 uses 0 to 1,000. The effect is a little less obvious here because it changes the most right at those very low numbers. I'll let them finish playing so you get a sense of what it really does. Version 4 also has two style options, versions 4a and 4b. This is accessed in dash dash style space 4a or 4b. This is because they weren't really happy with their initial implementation of stylize on this version, but they didn't want to take the option away from anyone who liked it. The test models, test and test photo, both use stylized numbers from 0 to 5,000, but I don't notice a huge difference on the flow. Take a look. Oh, and Niji Mode doesn't support stylized at all either, so moving right along to the current options for upscalers. The first thing to say is the default upscaler has been drastically improved. You're way less likely to see newly generated artifacts than used to be, but there are more added details that the upscaler can add, and they're often photorealistic if that's the style of image you're working with. The resolution from this upscaler is actually smaller than it used to be. It's 1024 by 1024 for square upscales. The light upscaler, up light, is essentially unchanged. It's faster, cheaper, and not quite as detailed, but maybe a little truer to the original generation if you're okay with a bit of a painterly feel. Though, it actually gives more resolution. For a square image, uh, it gives images that are 1536 by 1536. Lastly, we've got the beta upscaler, which generates the largest images. It turns squares into an insanely high resolution of 2048 by 2048, which more than completely fills an HD 1080p display. It's not quite as smart as the default upscaler is now, but if you want a lot of pixels, this is absolutely the way to go. The last change I wanted to talk about is the improvements made to the concept of variations. Now, when you select the setting Remix Mode, you can change the prompt that you were using at the same time that you request a variation of an image. This is a game changer. It lets you be a lot more precise about the art variations you ask for. If you generate icy peaks here, you can get a variation of nighttime or sunset or springtime or icy peaks in a lava world. Remix is incredibly useful as you follow a thread to make it something that is exactly what's in your head. But beyond that, I can release you from the lecture portion of this video. Now we're on to the fun stuff. Once you understand the settings and your options, you have creative control to make whatever you want. As you know, prompts have three parts, the image prompt, the text prompt, and the arguments. If you want to master mid-journey, one of those parts has a skill ceiling that will take you to the next level. Of course, that is your text prompt. How do you turn an idea into a prompt? I'm going to teach you the concept of prompt engineering as I do it in mid-journey. If you have a visual idea that you want to see come alive, you can just type it into mid-journey. Take a fresh lettuce leaf dripping with a gloop of oozing mustard. You'll get some good results. It's visual, it's fun, it looks like lettuce and maybe mustard, but it doesn't have that wow factor and it just looks a little bland. I just want to remind you the seed is still set to one, so if you want to try anything that I'm doing, type slash prefer suffix dash dash seed space one, and you will get the same results that I do. You can take that prompt, a fresh lettuce leaf dripping with a gloop of oozing mustard, and add some style direction, food photography. Suddenly, it does look way better. The lettuce pops and the mustard has a nice shine. Problem is, I feel like I've lost that oozy feel. Let's switch to a multi-prompt format and use weights so my style doesn't change the idea quite so much. A fresh lettuce leaf dripping with a gloop of oozing mustard, and then we put the multi-prompt breakpoint, give it weight five, and then put food photography, and let's try weight three. Now that is gloopy. But can we improve it at all? The actual lettuce looks kind of odd. Let's add some tags for a little bit more fine control. Take a look, fresh lettuce leaf dripping with a gloop of oozing mustard, delicious food photography, well-lit, award-winning photograph, appetizing composition. 
Let's toss in some specific camera settings and really solidify the image. Add some lighting info, a bit of retouching, and take a look at that top left oozy, goopy goodness. My god, it's beautiful. This is why we make AI art, that's for sure. Let's stop for a moment and think about what we just did. This multi-prompt that we've slowly filled out actually has some cool properties. Namely, the idea and the style are completely separate. Our lettuce leaf could be a painting or a logo. It could be drawn in ink or it could become vector art. At the same time, all of this stuff, the style information, it could be used for all sorts of food-related images. You could create an ice cream cone for celebrating Christmas or a cheeseburger with way, way too much cheese. Though actually, as we change the prompt, you'll start to see some weird things are happening with the food we're photographing. Sometimes it's great, but sometimes I'm getting this smoky, grainy strangeness that I would love to get rid of. I've talked about this a little before, but we can actually fix this in the multi-prompt by adding a prompt with a negative weight. This can both reinforce the style by putting a negative weight on ideas that clash, and actually remove something you don't want in the image. I can add those in, and my ice cream cone looks way cleaner. I'd say it makes this prompt as a suffix significantly more versatile. Let's look back at my final result for a fresh lettuce leaf dripping with a gloop of oozing mustard, and just marvel at the glory of it. Now that I'm satisfied with all of these parts of the prompt, I can actually save this prompt as a prefer option under the tag food. That would be slash prefer option set, then type food, hit tab, and paste the whole string after the first prompt weight. Now if I have a new idea, say a fruit salad with a lot of blackberries, I can add that argument at the end that I just made, dash dash food, click enter, and suddenly my whole multi-prompt actually fills itself out. So yeah, that was a bit of work, but now quickly and easily, whenever I have a food-related idea, I can use my food argument, food parameter, and get a beautiful enhanced result. On top of that, I already did this work for 25 different styles in case you wanna copy off my test. As I wrap this video up, I will show you Hannah, Roger, or Icy Peaks for all of my other styles, and you guys are welcome to use my prefer option list for anything you're making. I really enjoy all of these that I created, but I hope showing you how they're developed will inspire you to go step by step and make some styles that work for you. And they should match your idea of beauty. I think the most amazing thing about Midjourney is how it empowers everyone to discover the visual style that resonates cl most closely with them. It might be quick and easy to type an artist's name and let their style control your creations, but that name is just a shortcut to describing the medium, technique, and skill that that artist uses. If you want to create beautiful things in Midjourney, I urge you to challenge yourself to find or even create a style that truly speaks to you. Midjourney is flexible, and you have the power to control it just by typing words. If you're finding that Midjourney's own style is limiting you, setting that stylize option to zero will let you see your generation exactly how your prompt created it. It can be humbling when you make something disappointing, but it can also be freeing when your prompt creates something unlike anything you've ever seen. I've created a paste bin with my output when I type slash prompt option list, and it's in the description. If you use any of them and want to share what you create while you're looking in the description, I have a growing Discord community and we would love to see what you made. Even more, we would love to hear about a new style you stumbled across in your exploration. Good luck, happy imagining, and I'll see you in the next one. If it's only